It is time for the final push. And that's where I ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today. And just give them your best final words of advice and push them to pursue their own creative passions. Ah, the final push. Well, I would say reaching um, reaching out. Uh, the first thing I would say is you absolutely can do what I do. And in fact, you probably are doing what I'm doing as well, because we are all, we're all attempting to be creative. We are all drawing. So my f- absolute first word of advice, I would say, is keep a sketchbook with you at all times and fill that sketchbook, fill it up with anything, anything, everything, you know, just just make that, in a sense, the Bible of your your daily life. And don't mediate it too much. Don't don't be too self-critical about it. You can be self-critical about your technique and how you go forward, but 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 don't block yourself. You know, this is the fight the resistance. Fill a sketchbook. When when that is full, fill another one and fill another one. And after a while, you're going to find that within those sketchbooks will be a chart of your creative life and your creative progress. And out of those sketchbooks, your career will grow. So it is begin with something as simple as a sketchbook, a blank uh, set of pages, and fill them up, fill them up with stuff. Um, And keep looking, keep looking around you, keep accepting influences and accumulating, you know, your your insights. But all the time, keep doing, keep drawing, keep sketching. I think the only advice I can give is believe in what you're doing. Don't let other things influence you if you can. I know it's very difficult, but believe in what you're doing and just do it. And don't be so concerned with comparisons, just like I mentioned before. And specifically working on your expectations. Some wise person said expectations are disappointments created by yourself. Try to not have those expectations. Like like I said, if you paint from your heart, you will paint something beautiful, and and you just have to work on believing that. And I think that's the, the, the key to any success, because you can't plan success. It comes when you're ready, when it's ready for you. So... That's all I can say. I, I just believe that if you really want to do something, that you should do it creatively. No, there's some things that you want to do that you shouldn't do. But <laughs> if you really want to create something, if you if this is a passion that you have, if you really want to do it, then you should do it. Because I have met a lot of people uh, in strange places who say, oh, I'm writing a book. Or I, I, I started a book. Or I started a comic. Or I started uh, to write this novel. and you know, the world doesn't care that you started. They care that you finished uh, when it comes to art. They want to see. They want to know and feel the thing that you're talking about, that if you have an interest in it, because almost everyone has started a novel at some point, whether it was a sentence or 400 pages, because it, everyone's life story is worth telling, but not everyone can tell their life story. But if you're the person that can do that, even if you feel above anything else, don't worry about what other people say. Don't worry about you know, your insecurities and because no one's going to see it unless you show it to them. So you just just create it, write it, paint it, draw it. And then when it's done, walk away for a little bit and come back to it and then see, see how you feel about it, see what's there. And, you know, there's there's a learning process to that. And and maybe it's, you know, some people have one book in them, and that's, you know, for people that want to write 500 books, that's an agonizing reality. But they wrote the book. And they created the short movie. They wrote a song. They sang a song in front. If you want to do it, you have to do it. And you'll find that out rather quickly. You'll find that out uh, regardless of you, of the money situation or the time situation, because we tend to find a way to do the things when we genuinely want to do them. You may start out wanting to do something. You may say, I'm going to write a novel. And you might end up doing something completely different that gives you the same feeling you were looking for or gives you the same sense of purpose and worth and enjoyment so you should always be open to the fact that you start out one way and you end up in a place you didn't expect but if you're happy there there's nothing wrong with that ever the important thing is to start doing it and the second part is to finish something yes that you finished it because if you leave it unfinished it doesn't really it's sort of it's it's a kind of giving up that if that that you'll never know You'll never know what the end result is. You may think you know the end result and walk away because of that, but we're not always the best judge of what we create or what we do. 
or what we look like. You know, I can't, you know, one person might tell someone they're beautiful and they go, oh, I got a pimple on my face and I'm ugly and I hate my hair. And that doesn't really matter to them. That's your thing. But once you become comfortable with the fact that there's always someone that's interested in, in you, whether it's you as a person, whether it's you that you're creating something, it may be one person, it may be 100 million people. But unless you finish what you start, you'll never know. You'll just always be one of those things. All it takes is just, just that first step. Just devote some time. Like I said, you know, it doesn't matter. You could be working a job that you hate and that, you know, is sucking all your energy out and you, you know, maybe you got a family and you, whatever, just have that space, have that little space that's yours that you could go close the door. And even if it's, even if it's only 15 minutes a day, just put that aside every day. This is my creative period. And even if it's just going and looking at some art that you like or listen to some music, have that time to yourself to devote to just being creative. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. The strange thing is that you have to have the quote unquote discipline to do it. But I don't mean discipline in the sense that there's a harshness to it. It's allowing yourself to listen to yourself. So the most important thing of being an artist, and this harkens back to when I first started playing guitar and there was a guy who like gave me my first lessons. And I said to him, yeah, what's the most important thing? It's like you know, knowing your scales and knowing your, knowing your chords and playing with taste. And he just looked at me and said, no, having fun. And that is the most important thing. You know, enjoy what you do. It's not a race. It's not this huge dilemma. It's just being who you are, enjoying what you do. So that should be the most important thing. Enjoy what you do. Try and do it every day and try and get better at it. That's the final push. The final push that I thought of is that it goes back to that, you know, working that 40 hour a week job and doing the work. The way I got back to work in my studio, the way I started making again after having to go back to work again, you know, after 10 years off is that I turned off the radio and I turned off the music and I turned off the books on tape on my drive home from work. And I spent the time driving home. I spent my commute time visualizing myself having a huge amount of energy and having the motivation and desire to work in my studio. So when I got home, I actually did. So I kind of like visualized myself back in my studio again. And after about a six to eight month break of being way too tired to go in there, I basically, I did it by visualizing it and just saying I could do it. And eventually it just worked and I got back to work in my studio and I was able to come home from work and get back to work. The thing that has helped me the most and that has pushed me the most and especially recently is to acknowledge that mistakes are my friend. I get this feeling sometimes when I look back at my old work and I kind of cringe because I'm like, oh, I should have done this differently or that differently. But reframing that and thinking of that cringing feeling as something good instead is so helpful. And the reason why the mistake is good is because... It means that you at least did a thing, you know, like you have something to view as a mistake. Not everybody does, except their mistake would be of not doing anything in the first place. So like, that's already huge. You did the thing. So even if it feels like a mistake now, you did it. And then also, if you're viewing it as a mistake now, it probably means that your taste has evolved. And maybe it didn't get better. Maybe it did. I don't know. But it's changed. And so you're not stagnating. And that is also huge. So mistakes, very, very good. Get off your tush and do it. Just do it. Nice. You know, planning, thinking, you can over plan. You can over think. Ask yourself, and this is all over everywhere, and I'm sure this is nothing new. Ask yourself where you want to be in five years. Five years will pass no matter what you do. So if I say I want to get out this number of manuscripts in five years and I don't do it, five years are going to pass anyway. And then what? So start researching. That's your first step. Take a step. Write out baby steps to get what you want. If you can't write a full manuscript, start with a short story. Start with something where you can say you have a beginning, middle, and end, 
and you accomplished it. You may have to give up things. I gave up going out with friends. I gave up my Mahjong group. No. Yes, I did. So it's basically finding your passion and taking baby steps. I mean, here's the thing. This, and this, again, I'm just telling you what I believe, but it's, I'm telling you what I believe from my experience, from the experience of other people, from talking to thousands of people through my life. You know, I believe that, you know, at some point, you know, when you look back on your life, you know, and, and you might be someone who dies slowly, you know, you might know it's coming or it might be fast, but I actually believe that when you die, everything slows down. So I think that no matter when it happens, you're going to have a moment of reflection where you're going to be looking back. And I think there's only really one reason that you're going to potentially like hate yourself. I mean, that's a strong word, but that you're just going to be like, you know, excuse my friends, but like, fuck, what was I thinking? And I think that one reason is going to be that you just didn't try. I really do. I really, I, I have some regrets in my life of things I did. And I was like, oh, I could have done that differently. But it's like, whatever. The regrets I have in my life that have haunted me are the ones all the times I didn't do something, you know, the girl I didn't walk up to and say hi to, you know, the chance I didn't take, the play I didn't audition for, the thing I didn't write, the, you know, that's because you can't go back. You can't go back and failing is like not that big a deal because the thing about failure is you get to be proud of the fact that you tried and you learn from it, but you don't learn anything from walking away except that you're a coward and it sucks. It sucks. And so what I want for everybody, this is what I always say, it's my thing, is I want people to live the full expression of their life, whatever the full expression is for you. I want you to get to the end of your life and go, whew, it didn't all go the way I planned, but man, I just kept putting it out there. I kept putting it out there. And you'll only hate yourself if you didn't try. So just put it out there. Just put it out there and just know that like, whatever happens after that is gravy. We all know, you know, I know, um, all your listeners know that it's it's hard to schedule creativity, but sometimes you do need to make that little bit of extra effort to kind of coax it out. And a friend of mine whose grandmother was a, a, a well-known children's author, she had a great saying, which was, don't get it right, get it written. Mm. And I was trying to think what the uh, equivalent uh, in art would be. And the best I came up with was, don't get it drawn, get it doodled. Mm principle is the same basically you just have to do it and not be held back by by fear uh fear of making mistakes because all those things are good and coming back to what i was saying before you it's it's a win-win situation you know even if you produce something that you feel isn't fantastic you're going to learn from that you're going to grow from that so what have you got to lose just get down and do it well one of the quotes that i always say is you know, fall down seven times, get up eight. And it's just about never giving up, never, ever, ever giving up what you want to do. Anybody can do anything they want to do, no matter what. We've all, we've all been on the internet enough to know now to see all these inspirational things and people, you know, that have nothing, you know, come back from nothing to have something or people that have no legs who become gymnasts or Mm. crazy. um, We have so much inspiration right at the tip of our fingers on the internet for us to know that we can literally do anything that we put our minds to. Our minds are amazing. They're so strong and vast and, you know, it, it's, we're just very lucky. We're lucky to be alive. And, you know, life is too damn short not to go for everything you've ever wanted, even if it seems ridiculous. If you can see what you want to do, and it seems like you could reach that, you're not reaching far enough. If you're looking and you want to do something and it's ridiculous and crazy and amazing, and I can't believe I could ever do that, then you need to go for that. You got to just do it. One thing I always tell people is, You'll never know if you can fly if you don't jump off the cliff. Hmm. And uh, there's a lot of things that can hold you back. But I, I say just go for it. And realistically, you know, you can't spike Lee and, and charge all your master <laughs> car, all your credit cards. But the truth is you got to just go for it and accept that it'll take time and uh, work hard and be passionate and honest with yourself, especially with artwork. The public can recognize authenticity and they, they can see if something is real and that's what they respond to and that's what they feel. So my, my advice is be honest, be passionate and work hard. Those are the three number one things. 
you've been thinking about ideas, you know, you have ideas, things that you always wanted to do. And I totally understand that, that there are ideas that one day you're going to get to. There are ideas that are your side project, the novel in your drawer. Start working on them and start sharing them. Get them out there in the world. Don't worry about whether they're perfect. Don't worry about whether you can get a publisher, whether you can get an, an agent. Don't worry about what people are going to think. Start making stuff and start putting it out there and sharing with other people. There's that voice in your head that's going to give you a million reasons not to do this or to delay it or to undercut what I'm saying. That voice is wrong. That voice is getting in your way. If you can manage it, you will be happier and the world will be a better place. So get to work.